Hey y'all, so I'm back for another episode of Review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 5, Reunion Part 3. This is the last part. Honestly, they could have given us this last week and it would have been better instead of giving us that tired ass episode. But anyway, all right, so it, it picks up with Kimmy and Destiny. Kimmy is saying that Destiny um, is basically full of shit when it comes to her words about things she's not sharing and her opinions on the editing for the show, things that just don't make it into um, the taping or, I mean, the showing of it. And Kimmy's like, that happens to everybody. You're acting like it's just a you thing. Whatever. Destiny says she wants to make her relationship well known. Carlos asked her, it's still long distance. She was like, yes, but I'm working on that in therapy. Okay, Destiny. Anyway, so we get Melody versus Destiny. And I do mean versus, okay? <laughs> So they talk about the scene when Mel said she spoke to Destiny at Madani, but Destiny said it didn't happen. Okay, look. Anybody who's been watching my reviews, um, oh, while I'm thinking about it, please be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content. Thank you to all of y'all who have done that. All right. Um, I still think Mel was wrong for one, showing up at that event at Madani, knowing she was going there to fight. <laughs> <laughs> but talk about her kids and then not speaking and then acting as if you spoke to destiny spoke to destiny like you you should have just said i mean really spoke to destiny not kept walking and acting like you were invited because you weren't anyway so destiny's talking about her perspective on i'm so tired of talking about that madonna bullshit destiny said that um according to mel destiny did an interview um and mel you know destiny's talking about how mel came to her home after something had went down in court and destiny was like but well, she only came over for like five minutes and mel was like basically that's not true and she started to break away from her because she says she has to do what she needs to do for her mental peace her mental health so on and so forth she was talking real fast um destiny asked mel to say basically what she's heard Okay, whatever she heard about um, Tisha and Destiny having a conversation about her. And Mel said, you can keep wanting me to say it. We already had this conversation, Destiny. And Destiny says, what you're not going to continue to do is play in my face. Mel said, nobody's playing in your face. I don't even talk to you, sweetie. I said, "Ho!" Oh. <laughs> Mel with the slam. Mel was like, I'm done. Okay, now, Destiny, you can tell her words with... They went just like that. Anyway, so Mel just kept paying her lint dust, okay? I mean, I don't give a fuck. I ain't really team nobody on this shit. I'm calling it how I see it. I don't give a fuck. Mel kept her motherfucking cool. And Mel, I'm here for it. So, um, then we hear Tisha in the corner whispering to Marso, oh, talking about, well, somebody needs a storyline. And Carlos says, who needed a storyline? With his messy ass. She said, whoever came up with the lie. Then Tisha says she told Destiny, actually, she should reach out to Mel. And Carlos asked Mel, does she believe that? Mel says no. <laughs> Tisha was like, I do care about you, Mel, even though you have a dark soul. Tisha, Tisha, Tisha. That was just so unnecessary. That was so not true. It just, it was really just giving, you're a fan of Mel. I want to be friends with the popular girl so bad. Um, I hate Mel because I can't be Mel. Um, I hate Mel because she won't be my friend the way I want her to be my friend. But as long as I can be on TV and have this camera, I'm going to do everything in my power to make Mel look bad because she won't be my friend. That's what it's giving. That that was just just really harsh out of nowhere. And then to basically say she is the true definition. She's very pretty, but the true definition of devil in sheep's clothing. Like, really? Tisha, all y'all done sat on this show and lie about plenty of stuff, done fucked with each other over bullshit, so on and so forth. We want to talk about Dark Souls, we can talk about your mama. You want to keep it all the way real. Okay? All right. Slow your roll. All right, and judging from the internet, <laughs> this whole beat up on Mel campaign is really backfiring really hard on a lot of y'all on that stage. So, um, good for your asses. 
because y'all y'all need to come up off of it okay because the bottom line is this only got entertaining when mel actually started talking back to you motherfuckers because this reunion we could have done without it until this episode and it only was entertaining when mel actually gave y'all the attention that you wanted which proves mel's worth on this show mel was not gonna help make you all stars or the kind of stars you want to be i mean i'm sure it's easy to be a star in huntsville um but anyway shit it might be a flashlight never mind i'm not gonna start anyway all right um mel i gotta hand it to you though because you have managed you managed through this reunion to limit your responses refusing to give that cast the attention that they wanted from fucking with you okay and keeping your cool and i can fucks with you on that let me tell you so because i know that ain't easy but i know when people come at you like that just know there's something great in your future all right so she um said then you need to be happy <laughs> tisha that i'm out of your life and that this dark soul is out of your life and so carl says destiny what she thinks she was like i do agree that there are parts of mel that are very dark and i'm just sitting up here like well destiny we can say the same about you okay like i said everybody on that stage need to cut it the fuck out and quit acting like mel is the only one that's done or said something they didn't like like just cut that shit out um and she was like well mel went on national tv and told people that she gave um destiny six thousand dollars to pay her light bill and maybe i don't know because i don't follow these people i never heard this um i saw it for the first time when they did the flashback so if you ask me this just brought more attention to something didn't nobody really know about unless they watch that shit i don't watch it all right okay mel apparently gave her money when she needed it no big he, friends do that real friends they you know destiny has to admit that yes mel has given money to support her because carlos asked mel but on the real you didn't have to bring that up on tv when you give to somebody you give to them in private and i understand um somebody needs something you give it to them and they turn it back on you and you're hurt so at the same time i also don't know what i would be capable of doing if i felt like people were coming for me over and over again on tv of all places and social media and everywhere else um i don't know if that's something she just kept in her arsenal but it's unbecoming to give somebody money when they need it and then pull it back out you know to weaponize it against them mm, not here for that so destiny is mad because she said that essentially mel painted a picture like destiny is needy and broke I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. So Carlos is like, well, she didn't say that. But to Destiny's point, I can understand why she feels that way. Essentially, you're saying that you did find a utility bill. She didn't say a light bill of this. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. All right. Because we done all been there. And if you haven't, well, then good for you. But the rest of us know a thing or two about a bill being late. Anyway, so then Destiny says that Mel has kept her from having business deals that have gone through. Mel says she hasn't. And then Destiny proceeds to explain herself by saying, well, if you sit on TV and call one of your former very close friends, essentially, a liar and a snake, who would want to do business with that person? Destiny, that's not good enough for me. That's not. That's a reflection of you and your business acumen or lack thereof. Or maybe Huntsville is just not a good place to grow your particular business, considering particularly the way you come off on television. Let's consider, all right, you're talking about who would want to do business with you. Perhaps somebody who doesn't watch reality TV. Perhaps somebody who looks into your business plan and thinks it's worthy of an investment or partnership. Everybody's not watching this fucking show. Um, anybody who takes the gossipy word of a former friend on a reality show as the only reason why they don't want to do business with you is not somebody I would want to do business with because they don't seem serious anyway. Okay, so cut it out. All right, and blaming your shortcomings in business on Mel is way off base considering your reasoning. That's not going to work for me. That sounds like bullshit. That sounds like I don't want to take responsibility for where my business is going or not going. And we can talk about Stormy not wanting to sell her products with you. She is not the only, well, maybe she is the only gig in town. But whatever it is, as a business person, you seem to take things up very personally a lot of the time. 
And people in business are in business are often are very ruthless for a reason. It takes a certain kind of personality to detach from personal emotions and just be like, this is about this money. That's what business people do. And Destiny, you don't seem like you're capable of doing that. Not what you've shown us. Anyway, so Carlos busts in and says, well, a lot of fans think that real, the real issue between you and Mel um, is that Destiny is too chummy with Martel. Martel all of a sudden wakes up from his nap. I, she, I forgot that motherfucker was on stage. I thought they had taken him off or something. Anyway, Mel says that she knows that at the time, her and Destiny were confiding in each other about what she calls their soon-to-be exes. They were behaving very similarly, all right? Implying, you know, certain things about cheating, I guess, so on and so forth. And she felt like, why in the world would you be talking so much to a person like Martel, who has done the same thing that your husband is doing that is hurting you so badly, okay? So people can say two things to that. One, Destiny and Martel were friends before Melody, and therefore they have a friendship and it's a little different. That might be one person's response. The other side of that is, if I'm being truthful with how I feel as a woman, and I'm talking about me right now, I wouldn't like you for that either, Destiny. I wouldn't. I don't give a fuck who agrees or disagrees with it. All right. Whether people think it's rational or irrational. Mel felt like you and her were close friends. And unfortunately, one of those things that comes with divorce is that friends have to pick a side. And sometimes they remain close to the one they knew first or the one they feel the closest to at the end. Okay. We can all sit here and say, well, people should behave a certain way. Okay. Let's keep it all the way fucking real. Human beings very rarely have that ability. Okay. All right. So let me just keep going. And however you think destiny, it feels like betrayal. Even if Mel met you because of Martel and y'all became close friends and she was confiding in you, people can say you can stay neutral in situations. I don't believe that when, when it comes to this, that, and the other. No, no, no. I don't believe when emotions are that high, especially one that are running through divorce. A man like Martel, who has been so unfaithful and broken and probably emotionally traumatized Melody in multiple ways, that we can expect her to not feel a way about somebody that's supposed to be her close friend still keeping up conversations with Martel as often as she did. Period. I wouldn't want to be Destiny's friend in that case either. And all the rest of y'all who do that, people who disagree are people who are usually like the ones that are lukewarm in arguments and they play both sides. And then what they do is they find out the information from one while one is talking shit about the other. And then they take it back to somebody else, either the other party or a third party. And then they just talk shit. Those kind of people who claim they're neutral are always full of shit. 99% of the time, they are playing the fence so they can gossip about your shit. And I think that's the case with Destiny. And I ain't done with her ass yet. So Mel said Destiny called um, Martel at 1 a.m. or 5 a.m. in the morning of the week. And Destiny was like, oh, when you hacked his phone, Martel just looked confused as fuck. I told y'all he was over there napping. All right, the way their phones are set up, Martel says it still goes to Melanie's phone, Melanie's phone when um, he doesn't answer. What I got from that whole back and forth was somebody lying. All right. He said, you are sad, Mel. Mel said, no, you are. You and your ugly shoes too. And that camera shot, <laughs> I hollered. I said, oh my gosh, I had been looking at him without the fucking socks with his shoes for a minute, okay? But when she said that, and it was like such like a, like a playground read, but it was so real. And the way everybody else laughed, they had, it had to be flowing through people's minds, just nobody had said it. All right, uh, Destiny. Mel said that you would laugh when y'all were on the phone and say things like, girl, your ex is calling me. I'm going to call you back. Destiny said, well, I'm not going to be fake and not tell you. This is the gag when it comes to people, quote unquote, being real and not being fake. Okay. Everything you know is not meant to be told, actually. It's not. And I stand on that shit. Okay. Telling Melody that all he does on the phone is bash her. I believe Melody when she says that. Destiny was like, I said that? She was like, yes. And I, I fucking believe it. She did that to make Mel feel bad. Destiny, and I'm sure that's why a lot of people don't fuck with you. Because you're that kind of chick. But I'm sure there's plenty of chicks that do fuck with you. Because they that kind of woman. And let me tell you something. Women, and I 
I've had these experiences, okay? Th that's why I feel a way about it. Who pulled that shit, like Destiny pulled with Mel laughing about your ass on the other line, was describing it and doing that to hurt her. And women who do that do that to hurt the other woman when that happens. When your intuition gives you that bad feeling about the way somebody who you consider a friend has said something to you, and even though, like, you're like, well, maybe they didn't mean it that way, when it feels bad, it feels bad because it is bad. It feels bad because that person is not trustworthy. It feels bad because that person meant to make you feel bad. Not because you're sensitive. And I'm saying that because I had to learn that because I distrusted my intuition many a time. And there were people that just did not need to be in my life and were not my friends and enjoyed seeing me hurt. And because it, when it happens too often, yeah, you do start feeling like, oh, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm doing too hard on people. No, there are just a lot of fucked up people in the world. So if there's somebody out there thinking there's a lot of fucked up people in the world. Anyway, um, and they do that shit on purpose. People like Destiny do that shit on purpose. Even if Destiny was going through something similar, people are not always empathetic to someone who is going through that same situation, despite what their experience is. In fact, a lot of times what happens is they can judge them harshly, project their own issues onto the person they're talking to, with the case Destiny onto Melody, okay? To deflect attention from uh, how bad their own particular situation is. Hence the way we got that scene where Mel had been confiding in Destiny throughout her divorce process. And then Mel finds out that when talking to Destiny that she had been officially divorced for a month. Not having any idea that's what her and LeBaric were going through. Or whatever the fuck his name was. Um, she didn't tell Mel while Mel was confiding in her. Because she thought she was her friend and just listening. She didn't tell Mel because secretly she's in competition with Mel. And it made her feel good to know that Mel was going through something bad. I've seen that shit too many times. I'm not here for the bullshit. All right? And she felt like things, I, I guarantee you this how Destiny felt, that th things were still bouncing back and going much better for Mel than they were her, despite her going through hell, being embarrassed, all the things that Mel experienced, and still managing to stay the course. Clearly, she stayed prayed up because that situation could have taken a lot of people out. Um... And I feel like Destiny was sitting around embarrassed about her situation. Mel was hurt by what she felt like was your betrayal. And honestly, I agree. It's betrayal. Okay. Well, I think it's betrayal because Mel didn't use those words. Um, and distanced herself because she felt it in her spirit. I, I get it. Fuck you, Destiny. Nope. Not on it. Not doing it. Not doing it. So Carlos asked Stormy what she thought about the whole situation. And she was like, well, a lot of people on these stages have had deeper relationships and friendships. I don't really have an opinion on it. Um, Martel cuts her off and was just like, retreat, retreat with his fake ass shit. Retreat right now and stop feeling sorry for her. First of all, Martel, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You are a bitch ass. I cannot take it. Okay, so Mel called Martel out on him wanting to appear like he's one of those people who gets along with everybody. What did I just tell you about being lukewarm? And she calls his ass out and said... You know, he was like, everybody's just seeing you for who you are. I'm friends with everybody on this stage. And she was like, really? Why would you want to be friends with a bunch of people who have blasted you, who have clowned you over your builder's license and everything else that they've done to try to make you look bad on TV? She said, I don't want to be friends with these people. Yes, God, Mel, go ahead. And quite frankly, since you've been talking, you're the only reason for this show. And all them people on, them st on that stage coming after you for attention says you that girl shout out to beyonce all right anyway she said cross me once and i'm done hello and good morning because that is me i have gotten past that point in my life where i'm gonna give you two three four chance uh-uh grown people know what they're doing all right so then she sealed it up and said i don't need anything from anybody or you god is my source especially after i left your, left your dusty ass i said go off now go off yes all by yourself i am mad all right, anyway, so this gang up was given more entertainment part three because Mel was actually talking back to people after she paid y'all dust. So which says to me, y'all don't have a show worth watching without Mel. Despite claiming y'all don't want to be friends with her and her dark soul. I tell you what, that bank account gonna look pretty dark. Don't keep fucking around. Anyway, and you can tell it's clear they're all, they're hating. Like, like, for real, for real. 
and develop some bullshit ass alliance to try and make Mel look bad. Even if it was through the silence of Kimmy and Maurice, particularly Kimmy. So even if she didn't agree, I could tell, you can tell there was a conversation had about how they were going to behave toward Mel at this reunion. Fuck out of here. All right. And it's backfiring. It's backfiring. All right. So Mel and Martell, co-parenting is the subject. Lord have mercy. So Martell is basically explaining why he filed for full custody. Martell says he doesn't want a man watching their children. He says Mel wasn't raised with her brother. That's their uncle. She met him when she was a teenager. Martell, that was a low blow. That was a low blow. And they should have called you to fuck out. Everybody on that stage should have called you to fuck out for that. Because that was fucked up. That wasn't her fault. The way she got into this world was not her fault. Okay? And I'm not sure. And I'm sure not being acknowledged by her father was hurtful. And this is her way of developing a relationship with that other part of her life. That hadn't made a whole lot of sense without him. And therefore developing a relationship with her brother. That's her brother. Cut it out. Cut it the fuck out. Because you know better. And he was over y'all's house when y'all <laughs> when y'all were together. And you know it. And then Carlos asked, was it because her brother is gay? And he says, no. He doesn't want a man or 20-something people watching his kids. Really? Were you that concerned when you was running over here with a girl for five years? Who was watching your kids? When you was crawling up the stairs in pain to get the phone while this bitch called your phone and you had a wife? And while you was making a baby outside your marriage, were you that concerned about who was watching those fucking kids then? Because let me tell you something. I come from a family of five children. Watching kids is hard. It's hard for somebody to do every single thing by themselves. Yes, some women pull it the fuck off. But it's hell in the process. So miss me with the bullshit. Like you ain't gonna need a babysitter every now and then. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, um, he says, well, that's why we're in court now. In Mel's opinion, parent co-parenting is challenging because of the person she has to co-parent with. And she said he lies about this. It is clear from that trip in Destin, Mel did everything in her power. I ain't saying she ain't push try to push his buttons a few times, but, but Negro, you was on a free trip. Get over it. All right. Anyway. He thinks he should have full custody. Martell, you want child support. And you need a builder's license or find something to do since you claimed you got Mel out the classroom and changed her life, all this other shit. You should be making money over money over money, money hand over motherfucking fist at this point. If that's what you're doing, if you so fucking good at it. And yes, I do think Mel is keeping information because she's trying to play this thing right for court. She don't want to get caught on TV showing her ass with Martell. Martell, you going to fuck around and fuck this shit up and break your kids' hearts playing with their mother like this? Because the older they get, technology is always more advanced and at their fingertips, and it ain't like they ain't got to go to school with this shit. You going to fuck up. They going to get to a point where they quit talking to your ass, just so you know. So Martell starts crying when he sees the playback of the Destin trip or he tears up. Uh, Tisha tries to give him a tissue that Marceau sent. He was like, man, don't, don't do that. Don't feel sorry for me. Carlos starts crying and says he's concerned for Martel and basically all the emotions that he holds in because he's afraid just to say he misses his family. Carlos, baby, you are dramatic as fuck. I didn't understand why you were crying for him. And because we don't understand, I just felt like it was extra. Uh, Carlos calls him out, you know, about his fears. He asks Martel if he regrets what happens between the two of them. He says he regrets a lot. Mel says she never thought that she would have had children with a man that she would end up not even liking. Like somebody she doesn't even want to be around. And Mel was not having that bullshit from Carlos. Fuck Carlos. When Carlos made this point um, that he feels like he's hard on men, but he's hard on women too. Motherfucker, what you need to do is be hard on yourself. Okay? And slow your role. And quit mixing your role as host and producer and let somebody else do it. Okay? So Mel was not having that bullshit from Carlos. He was like, well, when they develop their career, men want to feel like they're wanted. Women want to feel like they're wanted too. How many women feel in their marriage that they're not wanted because men are running around cheating on them? And to Mel's point, it doesn't matter what she would have done. 
it would not have changed his behavior. And I believe that. You can be the perfect one and men still go around and do that. No, there's something internally wrong with you that you need these ego boost and these ways to feel, once again, powerful by cheating on women who are driven, who are career driven. There's always an excuse for a man when he does it. She gave him four fucking children. She was a mother to them. You can tell by their relationship, they were involved with their kids. Cut it the fuck out. So I don't want to hear this shit about Martel being a good father, even though he can't get along with Mel. No, 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 no. Because my idea of a good father is not one that trashes the mother of his children, especially on TV, every chance he gets. Fuck Martel. And I don't appreciate the implication that somehow when black women work hard because that that was all it was giving when they work hard somehow they've done something wrong for their marriage to fall apart because he's complaining the fuck out of here and then when women do it they're just whores they're just out of line they're just ungrateful this that and the other she didn't have to dim her life she was like we were always working and we were having she said i stay pregnant and she was like in my 20s and her point was yeah because your 20s is like your good years that a lot of people spend doing other things you know, get the fuck out of here. Don't do that. Then we get Tiffany and Lewis. I could have done without them, but whatever. And had this segment maybe not come right after Melody's thing, I won't, I wouldn't talk like this because I don't like Tiffany or Lewis. But because it was, I have issues with it. I didn't appreciate, once again, this narrative that somehow women who prioritize work, like people don't have bills and need to pay them. Like people don't have goals and dreams. Right, like, like Mel don't have four kids to provide for. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't like that shit. There's blaming women for working hard. And they ask them what they, well, Carlos asked them what they think about being diagnosed as fake in regards to their relationship. And Marcel's like professionally, but this smirk on his face. And Lewis makes some comment like, you need to come up with better jokes. Anyway, Carlos called them out on appearing like they were always having sex last season, this, that, and the other. And Lewis goes, well, in a couple of weeks or, I mean, just a week of frustration. I'm a man. I get frustrated. Um, Tiffany had this look on her face like she was going to pull out a knife if he didn't say the right thing. <laughs> it, I mean, it sounded like a lot. People, I mean, I guess people go through those things in marriage. Like, whatever. But uh, apparently Tiffany is pregnant and his name is going to be Ace. Um, good for her. If Good for her. And she was young when she had her, her first child. Good for her. Um, Tisha, why why did you even think it was necessary to ask Tiffany if she was going to be a stay-at-home mom? I don't like the judgment and the reads that the Scots try to give women um, who don't give up what's important to them to stay home with their children every second of the day, every hour on the clock. Because there are plenty of women who do both and do both with help. Tisha, if that's something that you're comfortable with, then that's good. And I'm not judging you for it. But that that little slick shit, that's the kind of shit that is why Melody does, doesn't like you. It doesn't fuck with you. I wouldn't fuck with you either. Honestly, I don't see what the fuck we would ever have to talk about. Anyway, then we get Kimmy and Maurice. The most serious and important part probably of this reunion, which should have come earlier. They talk about Kimmy... Um, being diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. Prayers up for Kimmy. Period. Um, she starts crying and she says, well, it, cause he asked her how she's doing. And she says, it looks like I'm not okay. She was like, but I'm okay. And they were like, no, you look good. And she said she thought about not continuing on the show. Um, but she talked about how African American women, a lot of them, um, are really affected by breast cancer. Like I said, my mother just got her second diagnosis of breast cancer. I mean, just in the time that I've been reviewing the show and said, yeah, I knew what it's like. I know what Kimmy and them are going through just within those few weeks between she has. And it's scary and it's hard. Um, and she, but she was talking about, you know, black women just not being screened. And she was talking about also just the lack of resource. Some people don't have insurance. Some people can't go to the doctor. Some people don't always know what to ask for or what to look for. Um, and, and I appreciated that because I don't like when people sit on these like, public platforms like TV 
to shame, but well, black people don't go to the doctor. Black people don't do this. Black people... Yeah, there's a thing about resources, insurance, um, low income that makes that very difficult too. It does. And there is a history of medical malpractice amongst black women, which is why so many uh, black children are dying regardless of class, be it Serena Williams, Beyonce, or the average you know, woman walking around the streets of Baltimore pregnant. Like, we get shitted on. So th there's a reason for these things. All right. But she says she's thugging it out. She says she only has seven weeks left to chemo. Then she had surgery. And that's where, of course, they, you know, um, restore your breast or, or whatever. Um, sometimes cosmetically, depending on what you choose. And then several weeks of radiation thereafter. And those things, um, chemo can be particularly exhausting. Um, it makes you tired. Uh, I, my mother's about to go through it again. Uh, Carlos admits that he lost his mom through breast cancer. And she's, he said she decided to go through it in secret. And um, Kimmy's story is helping a lot of women. And I agree. And, and I, don't, I don't want that point to be lost, that so many women lack the resources. And let's not forget, they're in Huntsville, Alabama. And I know that was always expressed to me, and I have to be very careful. You don't let doctors experiment or try something that you don't know about because there is this history of exploitation and medical abuse against black women. Check out Medical Apartheid by Harriet Washington, okay? Um, cause that will give you all the receipts on things that happened to black women. And like the Tuskegee experiment did not happen right there in Alabama. Those sort of oral histories are passed down and black people have a reason to be nervous with the doctor. That's why I'm not into this. Oh, they're stupid or we're stupid. We don't go. No, no, no. There's a reaction because trust has been lost between medical professionals and black people because of things that people do and carry out forms of discrimination on a regular basis even those who have internalized it facts. Um, so prayers up for Kim prayers up for my mother, um, who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. We're going to get through this. Um, so thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all soon.